Hi and welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on painting a dog's nose, muzzle and tongue. In part 1 I showed you the nose, now we're moving on to the mouth and I've let out some colours I might need. As in my other tutorials, I'm using as much real-time footage as I can mixed with some speed painting for repetitive areas. I'm starting by blocking in the dark area around the muzzle and inside the mouth. For my list of materials, see the video description below, but as always, my black is a Faber-Castell stick, which is quite hard. I start to bring in some dark to mid-tones, making use of Unison's lovely purple range. This colour you saw me use on the nose, Unison BE23. This looks very dark right now, but my later layers will bring the brightness out. You can see how smoothly the soft pastel applies to the paper. It's really like applying paint only without having to mix all those colours or clean a load of brushes. I'm roughly blocking in the whole tongue now with this pink as my base. There's a very light strip down both sides of the tongue. I have a little bother directing the large pastel here, but it can be neatened and strengthened later. I find lilac purples really useful for tongues. A good range of pinks and purples is a must for noses, tongues, inside ears and anywhere else that's fleshy. As always, I constantly redarken the darkest areas. The centre fold of the tongue is important as it creates light and shade in the centre. You'll notice the outline on the right of the tongue is lighter than the left side. Noticing these slight differences in colour is what will make your work more 3D, giving a sense of light coming from a particular direction. Here I'm using a total on which I showed you in part 1. It helps me create sharp lines as well as blending. I decide to get a little more done to the muzzle and the rest of the mouth. I deal with the base layer first, trying to look for subtle colours in the fur. I also use quite a lot of a yellowy green as the dog is sitting in grass, so lots of that is reflected on such a light coat. Before I can work the edges of the tongue, I need some fur in below as the tongue is sitting in front of that. When painting a landscape, you work from the background to the foreground, and it's similar for this.
I come back to the tongue and strengthen the outline, blending it with my fingers. I also add to that dark area at the back of the tongue, making sure this area has real depth. A lot of what I do is trial and error. I suppose I use thin layers, gradually building up the effect, so you can't really mess it up by doing that. I'm not really looking to microscopically create every little mark on the tongue, but rather give an impression of the texture. I'm gradually bringing out the brightest areas in the tongue and it's tricky as the whole tongue is in shadow in my photo. It doesn't look wet or very contrasted so there are no really bright highlights like on the top of the nose. It may seem shocking to pick up such a vibrant yellow, but when you look at the photo, this lip really reflects the grass and the flowers below. Don't be scared to use vibrant colours and notice how the colour blends into the pastel layer below. These small pieces of pastel I use started life as big sticks, but I'm not afraid to break those to find sharp edges. You can see where the sunlight comes down to in the photo. The whole front of the muzzle is in shadow, so absolutely no white is used there. And as I've said before, I prefer Unison Grey 27 as my brightest white. It's much warmer with a yellowy tint. But down in the shadows, it's light lilacs like A31 for my lightest tone. You can see that little outline of the bottom lip. It needs to be lighter than the chest hair below, but not so bright as the top of the muzzle. Again, I rework that outline on the right of the tongue and blend it a little. You can see the difference it makes each time I darken this area again. It adds real depth to the mouth. Come back in again with this vibrant pink, keeping my marks vertical 
like the subtle marks I can see in the tongue. I worked on a little at the area below the chin, just so I can show you the outlining of the tongue. This is the darkest part of the tongue's outline, although it's not a hard line and I will blend it upwards into the rest of the tongue. Using this bluey purple, I mark in the subtle highlights on the inside of the bottom lips. Then I use the pastel pencil again to darken around these marks. Nearing the end now, and I hope this video will have given you some good tips on how to tackle the muzzle area. I'm going to make many more of these videos and all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. It lets me know you're watching and gives me some incentive to keep making these. Thanks for watching and happy pastling!